Today, I will show you how to create an Angular scheduler app using DHTMLX scheduler, add it into a small application, and bind it to the REST API on the back end. We'll write in TypeScript since it's the recommended way. Although, it can also be done in plain JavaScript. In this tutorial, we won't cover server-side logic of data saving. Instead, we'll emulate the backend using the Angular in-memory web API tool. You can download a complete Angular scheduler demo from GitHub and find a link to the code in the description below. To set up a development environment, we'll use Angular CLI to create an app skeleton. Run the following command. You'll be asked to pick a preset, add Angular routing or not, style sheet type. Select the necessary options to configure the system to your needs. After that, we can go to the app directory and run the application. Now, if we open our local host, we should see the initial page. The ng-serve command will watch the source file and, if necessary, will change and rebuild the app. Now let's create the scheduler component. To get the DHTMLX scheduler code, run the following command. To add scheduler to the Angular app, we should create a new component. For this, run the following command. The newly created scheduler component file will contain the template for the scheduler. Let's add the next lines of code there. We'll declare scheduler styles in the separate scheduler component CSS file. Default styles can look like that. To make the scheduler container occupy the entire space of the body, you need to add the following styles to the style CSS file. Now, we need to import the required modules and add the necessary code lines to the scheduler component TypeScript file. The view encapsulation is needed to correctly apply the styles for the scheduler. By default, Angular encapsulates styles of components by adding unique attributes to their CSS and HTML. As the scheduler HTML template is created dynamically, using the default technique is impossible. The alternatives are to enable the native Shadow DOM view encapsulation or to disable it at all. Since the Shadow DOM isn't supported everywhere, we'll choose to disable encapsulation. We utilize the onInit interface to initialize the scheduler when Angular places the component on the page. Now, when the scheduler module is created and recognized by Angular, you can add the new component to the page. Open the app component HTML file and insert the scheduler tag in there. If you open the page again, you will see an empty scheduler on it. At this stage, an empty scheduler is good to look at, but I bet you want more than that. Scheduler needs data. To add data loading to the Angular scheduler, you need to add an event service. But before that, let's define the event model. For creating the event model, run the following command. In the newly created event TypeScript file inside the models folder, we will add the next lines of code. Now, let's create an event service. A service is a class that will be responsible for creating a specific event. Services in Angular can be injected by using the dependency injection mechanism. They can include data, functions, or some features necessary for the application. You need to create a data service that will be used to provide the scheduler with events. For creating event service, run the following command. In the newly created event service file, we need to add the next lines of code. We've added the injectable decorator to our service. It marks a class as available to an injector for instantiation. We'll inject it into our component further. Currently, the get method returns a resolve promise with hard-coded data. However, you can load data from the server side and also return a promise. The issue will be discussed a little further. The scheduler component is supposed to use event service to get events. To enable this, let's add event service to the component. Import the necessary module for the service in the scheduler component file. You should also specify event service as a provider in the component decorator. 
Now, every time a new scheduler component is initialized, a fresh instance of the service will be created. The service should be prepared to be injected into the component. For this purpose, add the following constructor to the scheduler component class. Now, we should modify the ngOnInit function. It should set the data format for loading events, XML in this case, and call the services to get the function and then wait for a response to put the data to the scheduler. Note that the scheduler parse method accepts a data object in JSON format. You can check the complete code for the scheduler components file on GitHub. Now, if you reopen the app page, you should see a scheduler with events. Now, let's move to the part with data saving. To help us with that, Scheduler offers a simple callback that can capture user-initiated changes to events within Scheduler. In an Angular environment, this callback can be easily connected to an Angular service, enabling efficient synchronization of Scheduler with the overall application state. In this tutorial, we'll implement simple services for events that will emulate interaction with the backend and connect them to Scheduler. We should install Angular in-memory web API. For this, run the following command. To define the mock database initialization, open the app module file and add in memory web API module. The necessary class will be defined on the next step. For now, make the following changes to the app module file add imports and add in memory web API module to ng module declarations. For creating the in memory data service, run the following command. In the newly created in memory data service file, we will add the next lines of code. Let's create a helper for errors that will notify users when something goes wrong by sending error messages to the console. To do so, create a service helper file with the following code. The services should handle adding, updating, and deleting items in the scheduler. Open the event services file and import the helper and the module for the HTTP requests and promises. Next, add a constructor to the event service class and update the get method so that it gets the data from the server. The event URL is a private element of the service. It contains the URL to the REST API. In order to send HTTP requests, an HTTP class has been injected into the service. Finally, add the insert, update, and remove methods for operations with events in the scheduler. To insert a new item, you need to send a POST request to the URL with the new event in its body. To update an item, you are to send a PUT request to the URL that includes the item's identifier. This request also contains the updated event in its body. To remove an item, you need to send a delete request to the URL that includes the item's identifier. In the scheduler component file, we need to add events editing logic. Since we import the scheduler object from the module to avoid unexpected behavior, we should create a data processor and attach handlers via attach event only once. To ensure that the data processor is created only once each time the scheduler is initialized, when switching between application pages, you can add a custom property to the scheduler object. Next, we check if the scheduler has this property. If it doesn't, we initialize the scheduler for the first time and create a data processor. If the property exists, then the scheduler is already configured, and we need to skip the stage where we create the data processor. If using the commercial, enterprise, ultimate licenses of DHTMLX scheduler, we can create a new scheduler object and configure it when starting the component and destroy the created scheduler when exiting the component. This way, each launch of the component will start with a clean scheduler and the check will not be needed. Here, we've defined a data processor handle that will capture changes made in scheduler by a user and will transfer them to data services. The handler can be declared either as a function or a router object. We've used the latter approach here. Scheduler accepts promise responses from the handler, so it will correctly process the completion of an action. If your service changes the event ID after creating a new record, which it usually does, make sure that your promise returns an object with the database ID of the inserted record as a result, so Scheduler could apply a new database ID to the record. Angular Scheduler is ready. Check out the demo source code on GitHub. The app can use RESTful API for CRUD operations. Keep in mind that in this demo, Angular in-memory API library was used to emulate the data storage. However, in real-life apps, you'll probably want to save changes to a real database. There are two solutions. First, 
you can remove in-memory web API from the app in case you've skipped that step, you don't need to do this. Second, you can configure it to pass requests through to the real backend and thus implement data storage. Feel free to send us feedback in the comments and stay tuned for new tutorials.